women throughout many, many centuries have not had a good place where we can be heard and our voices listened to. And without the vote, our voices are silenced. To be part of the process, to be involved in the direction of your state, in the direction of your country. Women, they thought they would be a civilizing influence on the Wild West. So history lives here. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal. The quest for voting rights nationally would take decades, culminating in the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution in 1920. We're so focused on the federal amendment, we forget that the story of the states was its own history, and the states were enfranchising women well before 1920, before the federal amendment. There was a, a lot of discussion among women's groups about securing the right to vote and hold office. So in Wyoming, we saw that kind of play out in a very big way. 150 years ago, when the first gold mining towns in South Pass came and went in a blink, Many people in the Wyoming Territory and elsewhere didn't have the right to vote. Native Americans, immigrant Chinese miners and railroad workers, women, all women. I think women were made to obey men. I don't think women ought to mingle in the dirty pool of politics. More voting women than voting men will place the government under petticoat rule. Wyoming used to be the place to go through, not a place to go to. What we conceive of as Wyoming was outside of the imagination of people. Cheyenne uh, was founded in 1867, about a month after the first town up here in South Pass was founded. July 25th, 1868, the Wyoming Territory was formed. And in that newly minted territory, its legislature met for the first time in Cheyenne. A bill to give women the vote was introduced by a saloon keeper from South Pass City. He was a man, of course. All the legislators were. Wyoming was something like six men for every woman. So this was a bit of a Chamber of Commerce immigration campaign. We have to get some people here and have some votes cast and counted because we won't get to be a state if we don't. Black men have just gotten the vote on a national level. There was concern that there was a need to dilute the black male vote by having white women. Others over time have alleged that it was a joke, that uh, legislators were just having a bit of fun towards the end of the session, and that it wasn't going to go anywhere. The old adage that sometimes you do the right thing for the wrong reasons is part of how Wyoming women got the right to vote. The suffrage movement knew that the best chance for suffrage law to pass would be here in the territories. In Wyoming, what'd you have? 14, 15 guys voted, it was a majority, and the governor signed it. And now that they had the vote, they had to exercise it. You had to be brave to stand up and uh, stand in that line at the polling place in Cheyenne, wherever you were, and say, okay, I'm going to assert my rights. Your pastor may not have approved of it, your sewing circle may not have approved it, your family might not approve of it. September 6, 1870, Mrs. Swain is walking down the street with her little dress and she's got a little bucket. She had just gone to get some dough starter. She became the first woman to vote in an unrestricted election. Equal rights were written into the state constitution. We get to the Constitutional Convention and Senator Joseph Carey sends a telegram back and says, Wyoming may not make it into the Union with women having the vote. And the legislature sent back a telegram, Wyoming is prepared to wait a hundred years if need be. We are not coming in without the women. Other Western states followed Wyoming's lead, and there were other Wyoming firsts, too. The first woman justice of the peace, Esther Hobart Morris. 
the first women on juries, the first woman elected governor in her own right, Nellie Taylor Ross. We started out great. <laughs> we really did with the, those legislative acts that gave women uh, property rights, equal pay, suffrage, uh, civic participation, and then kind of fizzled. It's a, a historical fact that there wasn't another woman judge in Wyoming for about 110 years. You've elected a woman governor. That was, you know, almost 100 years ago. So you're not following through on the promise and, that was given with suffrage 150 years ago. It certainly isn't that that all is well in Wyoming because we have it written in the Constitution. We have a lot of work to do to live up to that. It's slow progress, but, but we're getting there. When it comes to voting, I consider it a sacred duty. I will never not vote. I don't care how minor it, the election is or uh, midterm elections, I will vote. I feel very keen on exercising my power, and I will do that every time. <laughs>